What's going on, people? Welcome back to another JSTV back again. And tonight is the match review between Newcastle and West Ham. It should be the other way around, by the way. I've got two guests for me tonight. First of all, I've got um, Bill, who is a West Ham supporter. And I've also got Paul, Newcastle supporter, and we of course. Good evening to you guys. Yeah, Great stuff, great stuff. Um, Bill, I think your um, you, uh, Twitter's not working, mate. So I clicked on Go Live and it's just not working for us at all, mate. So, um, I don't know, don't know why, but um, I can't even get into the chat as well. But, um, guys, like the video, like what you watch, make sure you like and subscribe. If you like to see the chat, it is open. And if you like to become a member, it is just 99p as well. So, I'm gonna have to try that one more time. I'm gonna have to move. We have to move that unfortunately and try again on the bills and uh, let's go for that as well so i'll go for the comments as well straight i think it's already fair thank you leslie and um, super chats are available um bottom right off your enjoyment at 9p members only draws in a comment in as well no lord gaps keep comments respectfully respectful and do not mention of channels as given permission by me and um thank you les <coughs> Hi to JK. <clears throat> Welcome back, JK. I hope you feel a lot better, my guy. I hope you'll see you, mate. Great guy. I love JK. He's um, amazing on the chat as well. It's great to see him, him again as well. Hi to Alan as well. If he's in the chat, Alan will be pleased if he's coming later on. And I think it's great to see him back as well. Right, let's go on to yesterday's game. I'll start with you, Bill, Visual West Ham 2, Newcastle 2. And um, you look, I mean, um, the wasn't, first half wasn't great, I'm not going to lie. Second half was a lot better end-to-end -end stuff. And you got a late goal to go on to. What do you think? Give us your breakdown, breakdown of the game yesterday, Bill, and for those who don't know. Yeah, no, I thought, um, that's, well, as you said, I think particularly second half was a really good highlight of, uh, of Premier League football, I've got to say. Um, two teams going out, out, going for the win. Um, two teams in good form, not only domestically, but obviously in Europe as well. Um, and I think I was quite surprised, pleasantly surprised, that West Ham actually got off to the, the better start. I thought it would be Newcastle come flying out the blocks. But um, even though we played um, played on Thursday, we had you know, a day less to prepare Newcastle, a bit more time having played at PSG on Wednesday. I thought they'd come out flying. But you know, if anything, it was West Ham. You know, you know, thankfully for us, we got off to... The perfect start, they scored within 10 minutes through Suchek. Um, yeah. And uh, annoyingly, we didn't really test Nick Pope enough in the first half when Newcastle were vulnerable, really vulnerable, they didn't really get out of the traps whatsoever. Um, and you just know that they're going to play a lot better second half, which you guys did, and you know, um, and played a style of football which Shelly Hale's obviously implemented that since he joined the club, which a bit passive first half for Newcastle. So we didn't really take advantage of that. Um, but, you know, credit to our boys. We stuck it here. Um, could easily have been 3-4-1 at one stage because you boys were all, all over us with the two goals from Isak. And it could easily could even extended that lead. I think Isak, he hit the post again, didn't he, as well? So, um, but, you know, we stuck it here. It's <clears> a difference with Kudos. Obviously, got the equaliser, which we'll touch on. He changed the game. Um, but, yeah, 2-2, two -two, you know, uh, so, so, when it's the second half like that, two teams going... For us, a, a really good highlight of um, a really good example of Premier League football at its best, I'd say. Yeah, absolutely. Totally agree there. We've covered those points as well. And um, Paul, I mean, um, give us a little bit of a breakdown of the game we watched yesterday. And I will say this if you don't take your chances, we're going to get punished. Simple as that. I mean, Nick Paul, we're going to come on to him as well. But um, that's all cliche. Simple as that. We should have been free. Yeah, it was a. Uh, it was. I think in the end, I know people are going nuts on Twitter. But when's that different? I think in the in the if you put the whole game together, I think that a draw is probably the fairest result for everybody. If we would have won that, for, if that for a goal goes in, obviously yes, I'm happy. But it would have been a very kind of fortuitous three-one win, uh, three-two maybe if that goal went in anyway. Um, so I felt that a two-two draw or 1-1, one, one, whichever it might have been, I think a draw is very fair based off how the play was. Because the first half, I don't know what on earth we were doing. Uh, West Ham came up much more aggressive than we did. Um, they got, I mean, are we talking about Pope now? Should we just go there? Because that was, I don't know what he was doing, mate. Pope was, he got caught in no man's land and he tries to, 
he tries to fix it and it goes wrong. And, uh, you know, West Ham get in and it's, it's the easiest goal to score this season. It's just ridiculous from us. Like, we've prided ourselves on these clean sheets last couple of games. Um, and then we're just, I don't know what it is about us. We just, we have these games where we'll just concede these really weird, like stupid goals. And there's other games where it feels like nothing's going to get past, like Nick Pope. So, uh, yeah, frustrating to give them that because then they're at home, you know, they got the crowd behind them. And then, you know, they're going to, they're going to obviously um, try and get more. Um, I think most of them went a bit uh, behind the ball a little bit just to kind of keep that 1 0 um, for a bit of the game. But, that's it. You know, they're welcome to do that. And we, they know, Moyes would have known that we really struggle against, um, you know, a deep block. And we really did. We struggled. We just couldn't huff and puff in. We weren't really doing much. Um, the first half was, yeah, it wasn't great from us, was it? Um, and then the second half, we come out, you know, still, like, it was all right. And then we, we got, I think, the goal, really, what we needed, definitely. I mean, Trippier, what a ball. Isaac with a really nice, nice finish. Uh, and then immediately after, really, we get in again with some really nice football, actually, for the 2-1. Uh, mm. Again, what a great a great goal that. That's, uh, if that's not in there for goal of, goal of the month, then that's a bit of a robbery. And then, yeah, then we, uh, we, we hit the post. We were kind of going at them. And then I think that the last couple of, like, 10 minutes, 50 minutes... Uh, West Ham really came on, like like you're saying, that Kudos came on, and you know West Ham had a lot of the ball. We were we were trying to keep that two one, and then we get punished again. I think I'm sorry, Nick Pope. Again, I'm, I'm being ultra harsh, maybe, but I reckon he could be doing better on that because I think Kudos is a, his reaction is a bit like, oh, it went in. You know, I think he was maybe expecting Pope to get to that. Mm. Um, I don't know if I'm being ultra harsh, but. Yeah, I don't know. No, no, I, I, I agree with you. I agree with you, mate. Yeah. Because look, at the end of the day, he came out of a rush of blood, right? It's down the first goal's down to him. What was he doing, right? Yeah. I mean, I've always said that at the end of the day, I'll be, I'm going to be honest in my assessment when I watch a football match, you know what I mean? But he didn't need to do that, you know what I mean? I mean, I thought it was poor goalkeeping. I thought yeah. it was really, really poor decision as well. Ill judged, ill yeah. fated as well. I'm sorry, but it's just not good enough, you know what I mean? But it's just that goes down to him. He didn't need to do that. So, but uh, let's go to some comments as well. Um, do keep these comments coming through. Hit the like button as well, please, guys, as well. Alan, your man needs. I was thinking the same thing. Bless him. Two great teams played a decent game. Both teams could have won it, but a decent result from both teams. Yeah, I know a lot of people saying that point is um, a fair result at the end of the day. Big yeah. up, Geordies. I'll be the lads to you. Big up to Marshy, by the way. Um, Nick Marshall, I met him yesterday for West Ham Fans TV. This guy. Oh, yeah, what a guy. Yeah. What a guy. What a guy. I'd love to go on my show one day. I'd love to go on my no, show. No, you should. Yeah, he's top, top fella. Yeah, get him on, mate. Oh, 100%. 100%. He can talk West Ham more dear, that guy. You can just tell by his passion as well. <laughs> and, um, you know, and um, yeah, I'll try to get some followers from him as well. If he's watching uh, Marshy, you know, I mean, uh, get the, I mean, the cast fans follow you as well. Um, even the Jordan episode, even the Jordan, but that's two. And let's rest. Okay. And if not a little crazy, then you're not fun. I should say, okay, <laughs> but I kind of I'm not saying anything there. And if we're saying hi to Les <clears throat> and the gang as well, yeah, I mean, I went to the game yesterday, guys. And, um, you know, I thought if I'm honest with you guys, I thought it looked, it looked a bit knackered on Sunday. I think put all our egg, one, eggs in one basket against PSG, which is a wonderful, wonderful result. And you know what? At the end of the day, all right, first half, they look so leggy. Second half, much, much better. I mean, Isaac got two goals. One of them, I thought it might have been a foul before we got an equalising goal. And, um, you know, I watched it back again. I thought we got away one there. I thought Bruno should have oh, come Jesus. on. We're gonna come on, going to come on to Bruno later. He's That's not getting away with that as well. I think I'll tell my Bill Spears as well because you wanted them gone as well. So let's go on to some more. Him and Kovacic yesterday, I don't know, they must have paid the refs off, I tell you, because I don't know how Kovacic had about nine lives on Sunday. He should be sent off for the first tackle, let alone the second one he did. He didn't even get a yellow. Yeah. Le left the red cards in the in the dressing room, lads. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tom, what, what do you want me to do? <laughs> I'll tell you what, if Man City would have won that yesterday, I, I don't know what would have happened. Honest, yeah. that was ridiculous. Absolutely shocking. 
shocking guys just remember where we are uh, we're just remember where we are where we were and we have to get used to playing all teams across all competitions as this is where we want to be playing quality teams and excessive games yeah exactly i mean look at the end of the day we just got the <coughs> teams are going to be worried about us by the way yeah we can't win all the time i get that but if you haven't got a plan a you have to have a plan b you have to have a plan b yeah. and then men of injuries you guys got as well and the goal was suspended out. do you know what yeah. i mean and despite that look at the early starting lineup it's still very like that's how much newcastle have come on yeah. under this regime with the depth but also more importantly yeah. the quality of players to come in instead of your, your first team is that's that's why obviously you're going to go well, hopefully we'll go for you guys. We'll go far in the in the Champions League this season. It tells you, like I saw Moyes' um, press conference after the game, and he is absolutely buzzing with a point. Like yeah. that, that yeah. shows you that shows you the respect that we have out there now. Whereas, not being funny, five years ago, a point with Newcastle would have been quite a bad result. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it just would have been, you know. It's just being honest, you know. If we got, you know, points, especially when Steve Bruce was in charge. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you know. Whereas now, if you, you know, if you take a point off us, it's a, it's a, you know, it's quite a big, uh, quite a big deal. Which is yeah, yeah totally. it's nice to nice to have that opinion of us. Mm. Exactly. Is that? I mean, look, the end of the day, like it's on to the home games. That's absolutely fine. Yeah, of course, a bad day, but I take the draw. West Ham are a good team, that's an Allen. Yeah, yeah, and um, also, I'm actually pleased with David Moyes doing well considering his bad luck with teams he's managed apart from Everton. You know what? I mean, he got West Ham winning the uh, Europa, Conf Europa Conference, which is absolutely yeah. brilliant. Well done to you as well, Bill. Um, being a bit of a team, by the way, I'll send a um, DM as well, and he's a new um subscriber as well. Thank you very much indeed, Dean. We spoke about Tenali as well. We'll come to him as well. Yeah, the ref. Oh, yeah, the shocking. Was Absolutely tight. shocking. <laughs> I've seen worse. I've seen worse. But he, he takes the biscuit, this guy. Seriously. Big up mm. to Godfather as well. Hope you're fantastic as well. Yeah, I mean, like I said, I mean, the first goal, I mean, Bill, you must you could have believed your luck when Paul rushed out um, the rush of blood. I mean, I mean, he was picking up, number one, he was picking up Suchek, making that run. Who's who's marking? Because I didn't see anyone. I think yeah. it was Matthew Lascelles because I think Trips uh, tapped him on the shoulder, and then he's pointed to him to say, "Follow him," and he hasn't. Yeah. So uh, yeah, I mean, uh, as we were saying, like perfect start, and you know, it was a good move from us. Don't get me wrong, but it's all about you boys making it a bit easier for us. We've obviously, <laughs> I think I don't know if Trippy went a bit forward, caught out position, Pope rushing out, rushing blood to the head. And then uh, obviously no marking in the, in the, in the box, so that that's three bad mistakes there, isn't it? So, but you know, I think good play from us. You know, Pequet have a lovely ball to Emerson. Them two got a really good relationship down the left hand side, and Emerson has got to be one of the most improved players, not only at West Ham but in the Premier League. You know, honestly, he's been absolutely mega for us this this can this calendar year. Man, yeah. the match for us in the Conference League final, in my opinion, and un when it was at Chelsea and. It, you know, the other clubs he's played for, I didn't think he was a left back. I didn't think he was defensively switched on enough, but he's really, really improved. So, um, but he's always been good going forward, as proved uh, yesterday with the first goal. Um, good composure, take it around Pope. It could have been easy. He just smashed it across the box and yeah. just like not even get his head up, but he got his head up and pick, picked his team out and Suchek. And he'll, uh, that's the easiest goal he's ever going to score. So, that's <laughs> another goal for Suchek this season. So, um, playing more the, the role that he suited for rather than last season play more as a sort of deep line holding midfielder which is just he's not the type of player he's going to get on the half turn and 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 dictate play he's gets on the gets across got on the end of the crosses like he did yesterday so yeah perfect start from us we'll see uh, aided by uh some shabby newcastle mistakes mm, and that's on like close as well by the way you know yeah exactly defend, yeah we know the firm properly than that as well we're badly missing botman by the way we really do no disrespect yeah. to Jamal, but we badly missing Botman there because I don't think you allow that to happen. Oh, so there's, there's, level, there's levels in there. I mean, Lascelles is nowhere near as good as, as, as Botman. Let's have it right. So. <laughs> oh, man. Botman's going to be world class. Give him two more, yeah. And he wins the going to be world class, this guy. Yeah. So, maybe, even, maybe even a year, mate, the way he's playing, especially for Champions League um, exposure mm -hmm. as well. Absolutely. I mean, he'll be back soon. He'll be back after. Um, after the break, and um, we'll be back yeah. against Palace. Hopefully, touch wood. Um, big up to Joel, by the way. Hi to you, Joel. It was a fair result at the end of the day. After a lot of fixtures and with players out, I'm happy with a point. I mean, yeah, all Newcastle fans are really happy with a point these days. <coughs> and um, 
on, on the refs. They're all shambles in the Premier League. Two Honestly. Champions League games. That's I've watched. The ref are different standards. You know what it is, my guy? That referee we had against PSG, he was absolutely brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. As simple mm. as that. Um, I've seen two boots outside our club asking for a penny for the guy. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> right. Bless him. <laughs> Jones, Jones, and Les. Big up to Italy Jet. Big up to you guys. Um, me, I hope you're great. He's from America. Great guy. And he talks football all day. Big Milan fan as well. And um, yeah, so um, yeah, after that goal, we tried to get back into the game, Paul. Our passing in the first half, final third especially, we passed by about 24 times. I think it, was, I think it might have been in the first sort of half sort of thing. And then it just came to naught at the end of the day. Yeah, I think, uh, yeah, I mean, look, you know, Eddie said it himself after the game that I think we, I think you said it yourself, John, that we put, you know, West Ham had a game as well, so it's no really big excuse, but we put a lot into the PSG game. And I think that, I think I was, that was my way of worry that we were, you know, we were in that ultimate mindset when we played PSG. Like that was just like, we had the crowd, we had what a night, you know, brilliant stuff. And it's a bit like, oh, we've got to go back to Premier League now and we're going to be away. We're not with our fans sort of thing. And it is, it's one of those things where there's mental tiredness, but there's also physical tiredness, but they've got to be mentally strong as well. And if they're not in exactly up for that game, which it didn't feel like it were in that first half in particular, uh, that can that can affect your performance, which I think it did because we weren't, you know, I'm not expecting it to be the same performance it would be against PSG. I'm not saying that, but... When you've done it, when you've had that type of performance and had that type of high, it's it's difficult, isn't it, to prepare yourself for a game that's not at the same level? I'm not slagging off West Ham. It's just you know Champions League night and all that, just all those the big emotions. And then you're like right, we're gonna go to a hard stadium with a good team, and we gotta be as passionate and as up for it. It's difficult to be that way. Uh, lots of teams struggle with this when they do Champions League or Europa League or whatever. And then they have a game on a Sunday or whatever it is. Um, it's tough. It's tough to get yourself up for it because West Ham will have games when they get further into the competition where they might have to put more of the effort into the Europe League. You know, we've, can... we've had this last couple of seasons, Paul. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. And, and and when we were lost in the Europa League, we had an even smaller squad, so it, yes. it was even more yeah. exaggerated the amount of the, the drop off in performance because we had a smaller team. We we couldn't yeah. really rotate. If, if you know what I mean, we 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 got with what you got. Yeah, yeah. 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 Whereas, 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 and you you guys had a similar thing Sunday, like yesterday, because yeah. you know, the amount of injuries and Gordon suspended, so you sort of had to go again, lads. Yeah, and yeah. It's, it's and you are right, it's physically the body, but emotionally, like how emotional that was, particularly Sean Longstaff, Blackburn, <clears throat> Geordie boys getting the goals, it, and yeah. all the crowd there. I mean, it, it is it's difficult, but obviously, for you guys, four points from in your group from the so-called group of death, you'll take that. Take that empire, hey, wouldn't you? So, um, you know, I think you uh, you'll get I mean, Eddie House. Obviously, never managed at the hot at this Champions League level. He's got he's got to get used to it as well. And think, yeah, we'll see. as the competition. I like, make each match day. You tick it off, tick it off. And I think, uh, yeah, I fancy you guys to get out of the group now. Yeah, it's funny because I mean, obviously, going to half time, I think Eddie's probably got into him a little bit. You know, probably said to him like, "Look, you know, guys, this is you know what's going on here. <laughs> this is not." It's not a Newcastle performance so far. Let's uh, let's give it a bit more. And, uh, and sorry, did... sorry to interrupt, Paul, but I think the tactics changed as well. I was just about to say, yeah. Go on then. Yeah, go on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. As I say, also he did a little tweak uh, with um, with midfield, especially with Tonali, and that really seemed to work. Um, Tonali looked more comfortable with the switch, and we looked much stronger with that switch as well, which helped us, and it got Isaac into the game a bit more, and we were passing the ball a bit more. Uh, just had a bit more about us, and then yeah, and we get the, you know, the first and the second goals, and then we could have got a third, just the post kept us out, and then, yeah, you know, the rest is history. But yeah, so we came out better in the second half, but I still think that it would have been, I felt I would have been a bit, would have been a bit of a strange result if we won that game. Yeah, I never moaned, but yeah, it would have been a bit like we kind of, we kind of like got away with one there. I'm the same, Paul. With say if um. It, say if, if Pope did, that was unbelievable. I know he made some mistakes, Pope, in the game, but what, yeah. what a save that was by Bowen at the end. By the way, no, you know, I would have, I would have felt the same <laughs> if we nicked it three two. Like I'll, I'll absolutely, absolutely happy with it. But like, cool, we might have got away with one getting three yeah. two there. But like two <laughs> two, I think everyone agrees. And you know, it's a good game when you go 
every, both sets of fans go, do you know what? We'll take that. We'll take two, two. Yeah. Like you can't complain about that. So, um, but yeah, you said about the tactics and I think as well, Eddie, it went back to sort of Eddie Howe football, more pressure from the front, pinned Su- uh, uh, Sufau and Emerson who were flying forward that first start, pinned them back. And it was only until Kudos come on that they actually went advanced forward. Yeah. Um, and our press wasn't as, as tight knit in the second half because mm. you guys were getting it like the cells and share were getting it pinging it into the midfield and but there was only one maybe antonio and then because it was only one we weren't going as a team yeah and then and then so did you guys were and then you got and because of that you guys were winning the ball higher up the pitch so you know you were just you were sustaining attacks a, a lot a lot better and that's where well that's where both the goals come from yeah yeah I have to agree, guys. Everything you say, I just sat back, listened to you guys. You're so spot on. Absolutely. Yeah. And what are the chances um, we go and slaughter Dortmund home and away? Um, John, according to Didier Mann, right, on the Chronicle, he reckons that Newcastle could get to the quarters and semi finals. That's what Didier Mann said. He reckons we can get all the, the only one away. So if that is the case, then as a compliment, the international break has come at the right time for us. A good rest. Yeah, um, it really has. Mm. Yeah. Totally <laughs> we needed it. We needed oh, it. We do. We needed it with the players we got out as well. We have every chance, JK. Just need to play our game, sadly. And remember, there's a power de Gagno. What a player he was, especially when we sat on the pitch under Harry Redknapp and then scoring a hat trick. Remember that. And he scored a cracking goal against Wimbledon in 2000 at Bali. Wow. Isaac is staying with Sweden squad. So fears on injury allied. That's from um, Leslie. I think um, a lot of that was just down to him being. I think, bless him, he's dead on his feet, Isaac. He's really. Oh, it, oh he's you, put, you looked, yeah, on his there to drag him off yesterday. Yeah, like, he was absolutely, yeah, nah, on his he's, feet, yeah. He's put in some shift, right? He's done about four four games in a row for, for yeah. us. Unbelievable effort from him. Uh, Wilson wasn't quite ready to come on for. A long, a long time, but I think Eddie was like, I've ha- I literally have to take him off. He's he's set on his feet. That's what makes Isaac so good. He is obviously yesterday he showed his predatory poacher instincts, yeah. like two of your former strikers, obviously Alan Shearer, Andy Cole, Aguero, Rooney, Kane. If you get in the box, they will score goals. But also, he's the modern day centre forward who will run around, press. You know, get, get you know, get G the crowd up. You know, get the tackles in, and no wonder he's absolutely knackered. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, it looked like he's gone 15 rounds around the dally. Yeah, honestly, yeah. And he's still no, going through, so fair play, yeah. Bless him, bless him. Um, Foxy, bigger to Foxy, by the way. Always disappointed to drop points in the final mains, but overall happy with the point away versus European champions, especially when it really Bruno should have been sent off first half. Paul, you want to touch on Bruno? Completely, completely. I'll right. tell you what, I'm not being funny, right? He got put to the first half, which is foul, right? He saw. I thought the second was the worst than the first. But I yeah. tell you what, he was very, very lucky. Now, if Kovacic was lucky, Bruno was very lucky as well. I tell you what, I don't know what saved this Birkin, but I tell you something, he should have gone. Uh, mate, I tell you, I mean, I, the only the only thing I can think of, and I'm not excusing it, I just think that the ref, when he's seen it, Bruno has got, I mean, I, I mean, the tiniest bit. He has a tiny bit of the ball, and I'm not saying a lot, but he obviously gets to play more. And I think the only excuse I can, uh, you know, the only thing I can think that the ref has thought that he's got the ball first and caught the man a bit more and then his head, well, you know, that's not quite a yellow. But it, it, if he'd been on, it is. Like, I'm not I'm not Newcastle tinted glasses. Like, I was shocked when I saw that tackle went in. I was like, well, there we go. We're now down to 10. We're one nil down. Uh, <laughs> we'll try and get a, we'll try and nick a 1-1 and just, you know, Brick and, and try and get out of West Ham with a point, you know, <laughs> with tails between our legs. Because I was like, Bruno's gone. Like, you know, I was just expecting the red card to come out, and I thought we were very lucky. Um, I don't know, and I think that kind of affected the ref's performance after that. Not lost, he was good lost the game, that. lost the game after that. Yeah, lost I agree. Lost it. Yeah, lost it he was. He for, was both, ner- for, for both sides. Yeah, he was nervous to give us some free kicks. He was nervous to give West Ham free kicks. Yeah. Um, he was nervous about yellow card and people. I just think it, it, it's funny, isn't it? Where one decision can kind of affect the referee's game. Like I felt, I felt the same yesterday with Man City and Arsenal that when the refs bottled that decision, and he has bottled it. Like because his tackle is worse than Bruno's. It's a, I mean, it's a straight red. It's ridiculous. I can't believe he stayed on the pitch. 
after a VAR review. I, don't, I mean, I don't know what they're doing, but mm. there you go. When, when neither of us are Arsenal Man City fans, but it just shows it just shows that it's the inconsistency of of Premier League officiating. Yeah. Because yeah. Saturday, Basuma got sent off for two yellows. His second one <laughs> was a dive. It, it was a dive. Yeah, like, yeah. and then um, Diego Jota got sent off for two yellows again against Tottenham the previous weekend. Both of Bruno's challenges were way worse than both Basuma's yellow cards I'm, and Jota's yellow cards. You like exactly. hang on a minute, like do you know what I mean? Like it just oh, it's just back, beggars belief. Yeah, they need to. I mean, who knows? They don't, care, they don't care what we think, but they need to use this break to like meet up and be like, right, guys, this is a yellow card. This is a red. You know, just get some sort of like consistency going because I can't, yeah. I can't understand what they're doing. Because, like I said, in in, in re, you know, if you're being realistic, we should have been down to ten men, and I, I don't blame West Ham fans being, you know, raging that we weren't because. If that was if West Ham player on us, John, we'd be sat here right now, right now going like, you know, well, Paquetta could have been, it should have been off because he did, you know, A, B, and C. Um, yeah. So it's. I'll agree. It, I'll agree, man. There's only one, one thing consistency. And it is, you know, it's one of those things where we know this now, where we come back after international break, whoever, let's, you know, Rashford, Rashford will do a silly tackle to someone and he gets sent off for it. And all three of us would be like, Hang on, that was not, not as bad as Bruno. It wasn't as bad as Kovacic, but he's got sent off for that. It's just beggar's belief, really. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, I think you guys are right again. I think they need to sort it out after the break, during the break, and find a solution very quickly. Otherwise, the game's just going to go, just going to go. Yeah. There's a window as simple Al as that. Is he, Al Wembley needs to come, come out of retirement and start ref again. Honestly, <laughs> like, honestly, because Graham, was, Graham Powell and yeah, Mike but, Halsey yeah, but, yeah, and Mark Clattenburg, the ones who could actually, who would actually represent we England. Need, uh, uh, we need cleaner right. back. We need to call cleaner out of uh, retirement. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> we get him back. I tell you what, back. they know they know a lot of the, the still ref. I bet they were still yeah. ref. So we've got one here from Craig. I'm Leslie Saw oh, Craig. Hope I thought Craig's in the chat then. Had be nice for it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Craig Hope saying Joe might not actually be back for Palace game, which surprised me. Hope he is wrong. Yeah. Um, big, big up to Dean, by the way. Um, do you know, um, after Bruno for the red, a, a draw was a fair. It was disappointing game to lose due to going a goal up. But big picture is West Ham and no push overs, push over. A point after PSG is huge. It I is. mean, I, it's massive, Dean. It's massive. Totally agree. The last um, time break, we got absolutely thumped by Brighton, and we were we were miserable. And uh, we were hearing Eddie Howe out, Eddie Howe out. <laughs> yeah, we're still, we're still looking for them now. Well, Eddie Howe out the game. He didn't want in. He didn't want in. And now we've, gone, back. now we've gone what six or seven games undefeated. Mm. We've beaten the likes of PSG and Man City. And got decent points when we needed it, and uh, yeah, well, there you go. Like I said, they've uh, they've gone a bit quiet. Those people who are like, <laughs> anyhow, can't manage. Crap, yeah. unbelievable. Let's go through these comments, guys. We're going to Isaac Levela as well. I can honestly say the season has to be really interesting and exciting, which it should be instead of being a two horse race. I tell you, also back in it as well. They got two guys, that my guy Scott, um, John Paul's not been on for a while. Scott, that's absolutely fine, mate. You can always watch the replay as well. I hope you're okay and sound as well. I don't know what Eddie said to Bruno half time, but he came out <laughs> a player more controlled. Absolutely. Thank don't you. Don't get mate. sent off, son. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Please, for the love of God. He's probably like, if you if you get sent off, I'll dock that bloody contract off you. Yeah, God, yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah, um, great to see Newcastle doing so well. How has Harvey Barnes been playing? Am I right? They're thinking he is injured. Yes, he's got to be out for a few weeks, yeah. but he won't be back until at least January. So he'll be yeah. out for months, so, which is a massive shame. <clears> so I like Harvey Barnes, by the way. I would like to see Lewis Miley have a start. What will he will be? At the minute, not yet, in my opinion. I mean, we will try and um, get as hard as we can. But for the cup games, 100%. Yeah. And um, the cells, how this man covered, then chips can run it over and points out a different man and scramble themselves being and lose his man. I blame Trippier yeah. for West Ham's first goal, and okay. I'm getting a lot of people saying that as well. Um, the only reason Boone didn't get sent off was because the second foul was literally just after the first yellow. In reality, it shouldn't matter really. I could have to count with, 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 yeah, just... with Jota's one. Then he gets sent his second year was two, like a minute later, wasn't it, or two yeah. minutes against Tottenham? So, yeah. I... 
Yeah, it shouldn't matter. Yeah, you're right. I've seen that happen many. I've seen that happen loads of times. Yeah. yeah. Too true, too true. Surely they should have used the refs and um, retired refs who were actually good around you to train and support current refs. That's that's, that's, that's that's far too sensible of an idea. They're never going to do it. No. <laughs> it really is available. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to Birmingham, mate. Birmingham have sat their manager for Wayne Rooney. Well, there which, you go. Which I think is a disgrace, by the way. I mean, wow. John has done a wonderful <laughs> job. Wonderful job. Yeah, there you go, January. And, yeah. Um, um, is Lascelles and Pope are the brain 100 first goal Lascelles has no one to mark no no one to mark so he should be taking care of the runner that's the basic rules of defending and he didn't pick him up at all what if so ever who knew maybe Steve Bruce and Steve McLaren being enrolled in the rest <laughs> nah, not for me <laughs> Thing, get in the bin, boy. Okay. Right, let's go to the equalized second half. We young said a bit better. Dan Burns' header was saved on the keeper, and then it wasn't long before we got that equalizing goal. But I forced a foul before that, Bill, and then Isaac finished it well. Yeah, no, good finish by Isaac. Um, you know, proper, as I said earlier, proper poachers finish. But uh, yeah, I thought first, how, how has he ended up in that much space? Was mm, it more concern? defended by you guys? Yeah, um, you know, I know. You know, it went offside in the end. It was obviously it was checked, but Alvarez, our, our our player, headed it. So obviously that's yeah, irrelevant. But yeah, I mean, even so, he, there was absolutely no one around him. Yeah, good finish, good, obviously good control, good finish by Isaac. Obviously, as I said earlier, if, you, if he gets a chance like that, he's going to bury it, isn't he? And he's going to bury it for a few more seasons at Newcastle. So um, yeah. yeah, not um, yeah, but it, it had been coming. That was a brilliant save by Ariola from Burn. I thought that is a goal, a certain goal for Alves. He saved that. Um, but yeah, that just typified Newcastle. Obviously, fast start to the second half, and it's a bit of a worry from West Ham point of view. That's about three or four games now um, where we've started the second half really slowly conceded. That Man City packet to play over the Serbian team match day one Europa League. It's happened. Yeah. It's, it's happening too regularly at the moment. So yeah, and uh, so, and you know, yesterday was another example of it. Yeah. What do you think, Paul? I mean, they checked it for offside as well. And um, I didn't think it was soft side at all whatsoever. I think it was. No, I think yeah. I mean, they were just they were just obviously wondering where the ball ball had hit and where it hadn't and where Isaac was kind of stood. And you know, it was it was it's fairly obvious. You know, when Trips has crossed that ball, and which is again unbelievable. What a trip is sometimes, man. Quite world class mm. when he falls in like that. I just don't. I worry when he retires because. <laughs> It's unbelievable like he just sees things at the times where you're like how has he seen that ball and isaac again just this guy he is something special because that first touch makes the goal like it really does if he doesn't yeah. if he misplaces that or whatever gets it wrong uh, it's not a goal and it's just unbelievable again nice finishes again but that first touch for me is what makes that goal uh yeah the vr check they were just checking but yeah as you say it came off a west ham head so it's uh it's irrelevant and it's all fine but it's all, it's one of those things now with football, isn't it? Where, you know, I don't know, you know, I don't know if you found this on the two two where you're probably thinking like there's probably like four or thing five if five things again in your mind where you're like handball, no handball. Was there anyone did it hit anyone? Was there any fouls? Was there any like sometimes you feel like you can't celebrate some goals because you feel a bit of a fool. There's been goals where I've celebrated round, you know, at the ground or round the flat and then Two minutes later, the VR checks chalked it off. <laughs> You're like, oh my God. Like, I think even with VAR lads, <laughs> if you score in the last minute, equalise yeah. you go nuts, <laughs> which we did. So, you know, luckily obviously you didn't change. Yeah. Yeah. But you're like, oh, was it off or what? Or did it? Yeah. yeah. You know, you're just. No, you're right. Exactly. So, yeah, the goal to comments as well. Still about boost. Yesterday's game, look at the Colton, by the way. Yesterday's game is a good match. One point's better than no points. And yeah. maybe get elite managers when they're retired to take on a bar role, Mourinho or Klopp. Also, love to complain about referees, Aston Scott. Wow, <laughs> sums it up, done it, it really sums it up. And um, Cork is high Stapleton. Is he gonna like being called out of a last name? Less. <laughs> Do you think bringing back sub Peter the game back as a new way to strategize how team players? <laughs> I like it. <laughs> Scrap it for me, that's Malin as well. So you're going to, I mean, we scored another one five minutes later. Um, another goal from Isak, lovely system trip here. And then Isak finished it well to make it 2-1 up. And then from there, Bill, I think he was quite worried mid we went 2-1 up. Did you feel that was game over? <coughs> uh, yeah, well, I thought it, I thought it was going to be game over um, 
the way Newcastle attacked after the second goal. I mean, that, I mean, uh, we were talking about Trippier earlier, but what a ball that was! What an assist Beautiful for the set for the, like unbelievable. Yeah. Unbel- unbel- it was a good crossfield ball from I don't know if it's Tenali or Gimmerish out, out wide to him initially, and then a great um, cross, and then yeah, lovely finish by his head, just opened his body, and there's yeah, another tidy finish. But yeah, I think the way. Newcastle was just wave after wave after then. You think, oh God, like this is going to be, I mean, maybe not 5 1 like it was earlier in the year before it could get 3 1, 4 1. Do you know what I mean? At the way you guys were sacking. But, you know, we mm. held firm, put our bodies on the line. And as I say, we'll come on to it, but uh, the, the subs made the difference. But yeah, it looked for a while that, well, it looked like who was going to score next well, it was going to be Newcastle rather than West Ham. It looked like it was going to get the next goal if there was to be a next one. So, but then, um, yeah, so I, I wouldn't say, yeah, when it was, there was still plenty of time, I thought we could get back into it. But as I say, like, would it be too little, too late trying to get make it 3 2 and then 3 3? At one stage, it was going to look that way. Yeah, totally agree, man. Totally agree. But um, you kept right. Um, we could have gone um, a couple more goals. Um, Paul Isak one on one, Randall Arola and um, hit to the side, netted from a tight angle. And Elliot Anderson should have scored as well. He tried to follow it in and he totally missed it oh, as well. And that could have put us three or four on up here. And that's good as we've got for Newcastle to be fair. But those two misses absolutely cost us because Kudas scored um late equalizing goal. He took it well, man's left foot. But I mm. thought Tanali should have got close to him, by the way. He let him a bit of space. He could have done a lot more closing them down to it. Yeah, tonight I think yeah tonight could and I still I mean look you know not, I got I don't want to be too harsh but I still think Pope should be doing better there I really do like I just don't you know it just feels like it wasn't like if you're going to score from that far out you, it's normally like a special special finish but mm. I don't know me and being cruel I'm no what my what can I say I'm no bloody goalkeeper but you know <laughs> you, you got to you know you just got to think like it's you know normally that's probably something that gets saved but. This one knows where it's gone in, so we can't take it back. But whether I'm being overly critical, saying that Pope could have done better, someone was saying about him being unsighted or something. But I don't know what I, I didn't see. I didn't see much proof of that. Um, we just, yeah, like you said, John, we just got unlucky. You know, we. Uh, I think someone's put some voodoo on Elliot Anderson to not score for us, the poor lad. He's just, he, could have, he had a touch. He had a touch. So he could have touched it first and then hit it. He just, you know, this goes back to the last game as well, poor lad. Like he was. Had so many chances and you just couldn't. It scuffed or it went wide or, you know. And then that that's like another goal off shooting he misses. And then Isaac goes and hits the post, which again, like it's unlucky, but you know, it is what it is. And um, you know, if you're more clinical, then you win that game. But like I said, I would have been sitting here a little bit embarrassed. Not embarrassed. Not embarrassed is me wrong word, but a little bit like yeah, we won that, but we kind of got away with one of that. <laughs> like the three points feels a bit. You know, let's just hit and run and get out of here because, um, mm. A, we probably should have had a player sent off. And yeah. uh, if West Ham, you know, had to, had their shooting boots on, um, we probably would have lost the game anyway. So it would have felt very kind of smash and grab if we would have won the three points. Um, so I think, like we said a few times, I think a draw realistically is the fair result for both. Yeah, in the end it was. I mean, a lot of people saying about a point um, is a fair result for us, yeah, yeah but... Um, the thing is, right, at the end of the day, I mean, I'm not sure um, David Morse would be pleased with the point there. I mean, he said before the game that um, he thinks Newcastle are one of the best teams in Europe. What a compliment. Mm. Yeah, well, David Morse is... Moises, yeah, no, no, he knows his stuff, David Morse. don't manage over a thousand games. We don't know what he's <laughs> talking about. So, uh, yeah, well, well they, 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 Newcastle were four points from the group of death. I mean, with the, those calibre of sides, then, yeah, I, well, I mean, why, why not? <laughs> I don't think many teams play PSG like we do. I really don't. Uh-huh. Like, I, you know, I think, you know, if Real Madrid beat PSG 4-1, no one bats an eyelid. Like, yeah, all right, PSG, you know, got thrashed by them. But I'm, I'm still rec- I still reckon that if, and I know Man City are a great side, but if Man City win 4-1 against PSG, that still makes big news for me. Because that's, I think that's still like a really good result for an English team. You know, if Man United beat them 4-1, that'd be big news, especially mm. with their form at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. so I think it's one of those way. obviously you don't want to get too big-headed and too ahead of yourself, but we are, you know, one, you know, we are already like getting serious. And when we had, when we had these other players when we can, um, I'm a bit worried. 
I'm a bit worried that we're going to turn into a football club I don't want us to be, but that's for a future podcast. But I'm a bit worried. (laughs) Yeah, a bit of a plastic version of ourselves, but I hope not. I hope not. Exactly. I mean, talk about Cuba, so I'll go to the adverts as well. I mean, go to um, Colton's and Scott's comments in a bit. And uh, I'm just going to do adverts as well. Um, just um, I've got two partners as well, um, which I do on my shorts now. And the first one I'm going to mention is Tufts. And um, big up the Tufts battle. We're um, and Joe's TV is pleased to welcome the first partner, Tufts, the number one destination for classic football shirts that recreates famous vintage Newcastle shirts designs. In addition to the massive range of retro replica sports shirts, Tufts brings you NFC ins, buyers, bucket hats, features, Bruno, Jewel, Tonali, and more. The products are manufactured at the Gates and Beers, made by the fans for the fans. Check them out at Tufts.com. Our exclusive JS discount code gets you 15, 15% off all orders. Simply quote JSTV15. We also have partnered by the Magpie stores as well. Big up to you guys. These guys are passionate about supporting Newcastle and providing the fans of quality Newcastle-inspired clothing. The range includes hoodies and t-shirts featuring Gordon, Tonali, Isaac and more. Keep your eyes open as they continue added to the product line. The Magpie stores is a new store for a new dawn at Newcastle United. They can be found at themagpiestore.co.uk. <clears throat> Quote our exclusive code JSTV10 for 10% off each order. And please contact John Sinclair TV by email if you also like to join our partnership team as well. Thank you very much indeed. And let's go to some more as well. I did say we've got a comment about goalkeepers as well. If I just get up, it's, um, Scott said about Colton, there's Daniel Everson, Dan Ward, or Alex Smithies. If anyone in January talk about goalkeepers to challenge it, poor for me, I think Everson would be the best one. But for me, I'm not going to lie. Did you see the links with Ramsdale? Newcastle. Yeah. He was with Ramsdale. <laughs> yeah. We're getting t- people linking us with him. Wow. That would be interesting. That would be very interesting. I think he's still a kind of keeper for me. But <laughs> for me, Diogo Costa would be my dream keeper for Portugal um, Portal as well. Uh, or Prov- or Providel for Lazio as well. Uh, it'll be interesting how we play the PSG game in Paris. Um, yeah. I'll be there. Tickets or no tickets, I will be there. And um, it'll be very. So if it be Dortmund twice, then people will say the PSG could be a free hit. We'll see. In all honesty, best to say clear. Can't get rid of them for the books at Leicester. No surprises there. <laughs> and uh, I've got one here. Just just a pokes game, and. But we need to be clinical both ends of the pitch and need to put our chances away. John, is exactly what I've been saying. That's why he didn't win the game because he didn't take our chances again. A lot of people saying Ramsdale's supply competition, but I can't see that happening. He ain't going to go for number one, but number two to Arsenal, number two to Newcastle. Who's making this crap up? I'm sorry. <laughs> Who's making it up? Unbelievable. And I've also heard news as, also heard news as well that um, going to the hard tackle, right, that Callum Wilson is being linked to the Saudis. <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> yeah, whatever. whatever. No, just, just like do you remember when Bruno was going to Liverpool because he wanted to be a Liverpool player, according to Liverpool fans. Mm. Do, you remember that, do you remember that happened, Liverpool fans, when he went to you in the summer because he wanted to play for you? Mm. <laughs> we'll leave Never. that there, shall we? Never. It's not going to happen. We're not sell boot to another English club. I'm sorry, it ain't going to happen. Would you say top four and no cup or win a cup? To get top six, Aston Scott. Cup, 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 mate. We want a cup. I don't yeah. care about top four. Do not care. I think top four is not a trophy. Fair enough. Um, if you get a new keeper, it needs to be a clear upgrade on Pope. Foxy, Diogo Costa, Form Del Lazio, right? Those kind of keepers, those kind of kids can play the ball with their feet. I yeah. like Nick Pope, but he cannot play with his feet. That is the thing. Ramsdale isn't that for me. Similar level, do not get David Raya because I'll tell you what, he's a good keeper, but what he did yesterday it was whiskey. That's not, that's for another time. And Alan, top six, and win a trophy. We need silverware in the cup as well. Yeah. Big up to George, by the way. Hi to you, George. Hope you're great as well. Um, what do you think of Damien Moises' um, interview yesterday after 2 2 draw? Do you think he's going to be happy, um, Bill? Do you think he's going to have a, a point? Or 
Me, me personally, I spoke to Marshy yesterday and he said that we drop off in the second half. He's got to be right. Yeah, you know, I think they're, I think they're both right. I think um, you know we are. We, well, everyone said it. We are happy with a draw, but I don't think we helped ourselves by sitting too deep and inviting Newcastle. I mean, Newcastle played a lot better, but we we helped them by sitting too deep and they controlled the ball, ball, ball more, attacked more, and and obviously we had, had more shots. So um, I don't think we we helped ourselves. Um, mm. As I said earlier, I think we should have got more shots away in the first half when Newcastle were vulnerable. Um, which we didn't do and it doesn't matter what league you play whether it's Premier League or Sunday League if you're only one goal up it's it, it's you know a very uh, a tricky scoreline so um, yeah I don't, I don't think we, we helped ourselves but then once the subs come on we, we st- we've started playing like ourselves again but yeah if you if you switch off and as Newcastle found out in the first half if you drop drop your levels by even just 5% in, especially in this competitive Premier League you'll get found out 100 percent 100 no question about that as well but um look at the end of the day i mean um, i think damien Moyes is the right man for the job i think at west ham in my opinion i don't think they ever sack him because he's won your trophy but the question is though who's out there he's going to take Moyes' place in the future i can't think of anyone at the minute yeah well, he's, doing a, he's doing a great job i mean obviously his contract's up at the end of the season and if we're in a similar position when it comes to you know january february and he gets offered an extension, I'll be like, yeah, fair fucking play. He deserves it. So, um, you know, last season, don't get me wrong, I, there was a time after we lost to Brentford after the World Cup before he's got to go here. We're losing games and playing crap and we're sliding towards relegation. It's like, well, all managers have their shelf life, even the greats that are some finger. Um, so, um, but, you know, he's turned it around, obviously stayed up, you know, got one won some shit house games against Southampton and Everton, <laughs> etc. And obviously won the Conference League final brilliantly. Um and yeah, we've had a superb start. You know, invested well in the summer, had a superb start to the season. Um yeah, he's he's uh and we've only lost to Man City and Liverpool, obviously two quality sides. So yeah, he's doing doing a great job at the moment. So uh hope it continues. Fingers crossed, eh? Fingers crossed to you guys. Um I just say, John, you said you prefer Everson out of the goalkeepers. I suggest, however, I can't wait for Denmark squad at the minute. From what I've seen of him, he looks a decent keeper. He looks a really decent keeper, by the way. But <clears throat> really, my first choice, probably not. But at the end of the day, I mean, you need a world class keeper if Liverpool, <clears throat> excuse me, going to, um, you know, need an upgrade on him in the future. Um, question on West Ham Does Kudus need to start from now on? I think he needs to find a way of having Bowen, Pukata, Kudus in the starting 11. Spent the rice money exceptionally well. Ah, oh, too. Great. Yeah, bang on. Yeah, he's got well, he's got to start. I mean, that that obviously is only on for 15 minutes or whatever, but that it was absolutely fantastic. I'd say changed the game, not only with the equaliser, but just the way he played. And do you know what he reminds me of, lads? I think he's a better player. But he reminds me of the play you had for a couple of seasons was St. Maximan. He really reminds me of of him the way they so unpredictable it gets you on the edge of the seat, um, and that, something happens. He either takes on the player, crosses it, or will take on the player, but the defender gets in the way. He always wants the ball, and whether you're an, an attacker player, you want somebody who's brave who always wants the ball, even in tight situations. So, um, yes, yeah, so he, he he changed the game, took players on create space for others and uh, yeah it was a really good strike in the end um, I think what I don't think Pope, Pope was helped I think he might have gone through Cher's legs so if it goes through the legs goes in the goal most of the time and uh, he hit it went like a, a slow shot you know he hit it, like absolutely fired it in so um, yeah great strike and uh, the least he deserved from his uh, fabulous performance and yeah yeah Fox is absolutely right I think he's got to start now whether you play him out wide or you give him a free roll as a false nine, he's got to start now. I mean, Nick Antonio's done great for West Ham last few seasons, but he's not getting any younger. And I don't, I don't think him starting every game suits him now. It, you know, yeah. if he did what Kudos does, that would probably suit him more, actually. In So in the Prem games, coming on with 20 minutes to go, because he's still got a bit of pace, him against tired defence be, you know, disaster for the, for the defenders. So um, I think it should be a swap. I think yeah, Kudos should play up front or have Bowen up front and Kudos out wide. But yeah, Kudos got to start now. He's, he's done well in the Europa League game so far. Um, yeah, he's, he's got to start in the, in the Prem from, from now on. Yeah, I think you do well for you guys. I mean, he's quick. He's got a lovely left foot on him. Absolutely brilliant, this guy. Mm. And um, 
his injury record is not the best, but just look after him and you'll be fine. Um, that's good. So who would you say that you played against this season would be contenders? Sheffield United. United. Sheffield United. Stru- well, both of yeah. us, 8-0 yeah. and 2-0. But yeah. honestly, it was the easiest 2-0 win you'll yeah. ever have in Premier League football. Yeah. They they were absolutely woeful when we played. Obviously, <laughs> they were when you guys thrashed them 8-0. You know, it's bad we have a number after the scoreline, 8. And <laughs> no, near 8, 8 in brackets. Um, but... <laughs> I'll say it was the easiest 2 0 when you were ever going to say they remind me of that Derby team from like I think 07 yeah. 08, got 15 yeah. points, absolutely stuck yeah. the place out. And I've got nothing against Sheffield. I know Sheffield United you know, have this weird rivalry with Tevez, whatever. I don't really care about them, but they they are they are rubbish. You know, it's, it's a fact. Just, you know, at least they haven't blown their budget or whatever, but you just it is a championship team, isn't it? So, yeah. you know, if you if you've got a championship players playing in the Premier League week and week, you're gonna get yeah, you get destroyed. So I, mean, I never, want, never want a manager to lose their job, but I was really surprised that he kept his job after the thrash in. Yeah. And he's still there. Like, I just don't... I, yeah, I just don't know. I don't know what they're... The mate, mate who you get, I think even Eddie Howe or, or Unai Emery, David Boys, they're, stri- you know, obviously the, the top managers would get Sheffield United out, but, like, <laughs> even those kind of level managers would struggle with, you know, look at Big Sam with West Brom and Leeds, even he can keep them up, them two clubs up, and Sheffield United even worse, even exactly. worse than them two I've mentioned, so oh, yeah. I, think, oh, I think that phrase he, like... going to be their future in December when maybe he gets sacked and Big Sam comes in to try and save them, oh man. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't matter who they've got, they're, they're just not, they're not very good, as we've seen yeah. already, um, but I think when we played them, even though it's only 2-0, you know that phrase like, oh, we didn't get our second gear. Lads, I don't think we got our first gear. I don't think we got the gear. I don't think we were kind of neutral was how easy it was um, when we played them. And uh, I thought, do you know I think Luton have been decent. Um, yeah, they've been okay. Yeah. You know, they got lucky against Tottenham, I thought. Yeah. You know, and another day could easily get a draw there. Um, I think obviously the home factor is going to be, I know they won at Goodison Park, which is a great result, but they need to. <coughs> they need to they need, it's going for them. They lost to Burnley because that's the game where right we need to get we need to get free <laughs> there. Um, but I think yeah, I think, I think look, yeah, for Sheffield United, Luton, and it's that it's that third team. You know, if you, if you at the start of the season, I had Wolves, but they've really turned it around. Lost yeah. a couple of games. Um, you know, Bournemouth. I expect they'd be pretty decent. They haven't won it at all this season. So I don't big trouble at the minute. Don't yeah, so big, I don't know, big that, trouble. It's that it's that eight, twentieth and nineteenth. I'm pretty, I'm pretty confident. I think most fans are confident, but it's that, it's that third team, and it could be one of six or seven. I would say there's a lot, there's a lot down there fighting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, even, 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 even Fulham. Yeah, because you know, Mitch Rich has gone. You know, they're not, not. You know, Chelsea absolutely demolished them, and Chelsea are not very good, are they? So, really. yeah, I don't know. It's, it's, it's that, it's that third spot for me. Is, is the tricky one. Oh, it's going to be tough. At the middle, I think it's going to be Bournemouth. I mean, I like that term their manager. I think he's a really good manager. But at the end of the day, they're just not clicking at all whatsoever. Another thing with Bournemouth, they're just not scoring goals. That is their problem. Well, Isn't it nice that we've got, we've got a Newcastle podcast and a West Ham fan, and neither of us are worried about what, for bloody relegation? <laughs> it's lovely, there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We don't call people. We don't call people out. We don't um, yeah. have a bit of banter, as well, which is fantastic. That's why <laughs> the chance is going on the up as well. Um, we have to remember West Ham players off the park at t- pitch at times and assured how would they have done and remind that they won a European Cup last season. Mm, yeah. Absolutely right, John. Totally agree. Share goal kicker. Hmm. We'll see. And what about Bruno at the minute? He's walking on a very tight line. What are your thoughts? My thoughts is Paul. I mean, look, you can't change him. But if you turn that away, a question away from him, he's not going to be the same player. But he has got to come in. Yeah, well, I would agree with that. Yeah, it's him. It's if we got we got a few of them, mate. It's not just you know we've got him. We've got Anthony Gordon, who's always on the precipice of maybe getting <laughs> picked hard. And we've got Big Joe. We, we love Big Joe, but again, he's another one who can. He can leave a foot in and he can get a bit aggressive and get, you know, he's probably going to be one of the first people to 10 yellow cards, um, you know, because he just brutes around and just throws people on the floor. Um, you know, we've got a few players who, who are on that line and it's just, that's Eddie's job to just to kind of keep on that, just that edge of that line. You know, we want them near there because obviously it's great to have aggressiveness in the game. But yeah, sometimes, you know, Gordon and Bruno in particular, they don't help themselves at times because they do... Gordon in particular, like I know Bruno's bad for it, but Gordon in particular worries me at times because he does, he holds that, like if, if someone, if a player fails him or something, he kind of holds that and then 
he, he leaves a foot in or he goes in a bit stronger than he needs to in the next tackle. Um, mm. And he's just one of those where if he catches someone wrong, he's a red card. And then, then when you know, we're struggling for the game, um, and you know, look, he's the first player we've lost to the to the uh, five suspended, you know, five cards, and he's probably going to be the second, you know, the first player we lose to ten. Him or Joe, I think it's going to be a straight battle between those two. <laughs> <laughs> I think really he want to go back to Brazil for a winter's holiday. That's what it is. You know what I mean? <laughs> back to real for a week or so. You know, just top at the tan. Do you know what? Yeah. Yeah. Kevin, Kevin Olin obviously played for both both our clubs. He, he was the tourist for that around the Christmas. Uh, the Boxing Day, getting the, getting the 10th yellow cards and missed the Boxing Day game. Yeah. Was that. It was a tourist for that. <laughs> wow. Oh, man. They know the drill, don't they? They know the yeah, drill. They're not, they're, not, not they're not stupid. They're not stupid. They know the rules, yeah. Exactly. Um, Bill just needs to calm it down a bit. He's very passionate. And to be honest, I'd rather have Bruno being a lot of reckless at times than not give a damn about our club. And that's from JK. Um, yeah. Sheffield is the gift that keeps on giving. Sheffield will be relegated to Championship. Sheffield will be relegated to League One. We need a DM in January to take the pressure off Bruno. Number six, Alan. We've said that for months. And we need a centre-back as well. Yes, we do. And 100% we need a, definitely a centre-back. 100%. And we talked about relegation, right? There's another team we haven't mentioned as well. And I think they could be bothered if Tony goes elsewhere. And I'll tell you what, though. I get Tony back. Because this guy is absolutely, he, he's improved year after year after year. I take, I'm taking back in January or in the summer. I don't want him. You don't. I, I take him all day long. I, I don't, I, I don't, I don't like cheats in my club. I'm sorry, I, I, I can't. I just don't understand. I, don't, I mean, betting against Newcastle. I don't want him in the club again. Not being funny. Would you take Ivan Tony back to Newcastle? Or leave it in the chat, guys. Yeah. Um, Brentford to go down if Tony gets sword. I mean. I don't know if Brentford's going to get so. I think Brentford will always get a striker from somewhere and they will find yeah, a way they're, they're too, they're, I think they're too... I mean, look how well they've... I mean, they haven't, they haven't won many games. They haven't lost too many. Obviously, they only lost in the last minute on Saturday. So they're, they're too well organised to, to to go down, I think. Yeah. I think that third one's going to be very interesting. The eyes peel for that. World of World of the Cup, West Ham, Russell Colton. Scott said, what scares me as Leicester fans how Burnley are struggling this season, considering we are trying to play a similar style of football to them. For the tough, I, tough fixtures, though, Burnley. They yeah, are really, yeah, really they tough fixtures. Like... So I think, I think they're, I haven't checked their fit. I think we've got like, easier or more winnable games next few, and that's going to be the, the key for them. Yeah, I agree. I mean, just enjoy your football. I think Burnley got a bit somewhere, one way or another. I think yeah. Burnley will be fine this season. They will find a way. Okay, five out of seven teams, five out of seven teams above us, some better games to come. Absolutely. You know what? I think you're going to get top four again this season. Top four, top five would be great. And um, but with Leslie, we should buy back Bellingham again. That's never, ever going to happen. <laughs> never. Would you, have, would you leave Real Madrid to come back to the Prem? I doubt it. <laughs> I doubt it. You must be favoured, Scott, and the experience to make a good go of it next season. Leicester are great, a good team. They should never have been relegated. No way. Tony would go to Saudi or USA. I don't think go to the States. And for me, if he goes to Saudi, I'll be I'll be surprised. I'll be surprised. Yeah, it was to play for it was play for England. Yeah. yeah. Going to Saudi is not gonna help, isn't it, really? No, unless you unless you're Jordan Henderson, but yeah. <laughs> Apparently Southgate's gone to flipping Saudi. Checking them off. God's sake, man. Why is this guy in the manager? He's finished. The guy's finished. Why is this guy in the manager? He's so bloody and I nearly swore then. He's wow. So, so annoying. He does my head in. How is um, how is Anthony Gord not in there? How? Yeah, what, the season he's had, I Me don't... Too. This guy, he's off his head. I'm sorry. It's just... It gets infuriating after time. I'm not even being like Newcastle United fan here. If I support any other team, I don't care. I'd be like, I don't understand how... The guy can have this good of a season so far and not get in the squad. And Calvin Phillips is there. I just same, same, same. Again, I'd say the same thing if I wanted the West End fan about Ward Prowse as well. Yeah, how is he not? Yeah, it's just honestly, Southgate, I can't wait for him to go. He just does my nut in. Yeah, and it's also does, it's also going to come up to Eddie Howell as well. But he's in. Nah, I think, I think, I think he'll probably go for Graham Potter. Yeah, it looks like it, looking that way. Um, Gosling stats as well. Newcastle 64.8% of stats. 
35.2 for West Ham. Shots on goals for each. Shots attempts 10 to Newcastle, 5 for West Ham. 18 fouls to Newcastle, 11 to West Ham. Yellow cards, fees apiece. And <laughs> quarter kicks, um, West Ham 4 2. And saves one each. That Nick Pope saved right at the end. Save God Beacon from Bum. What a brilliant low down save as well. Wow. <clears throat> and let's go on to Foxy. You can see Chelsea taking on Tawny. That's what's been going on. Is Southgate not going to sell you to set up probably. his next job? Yeah, <laughs> probably, probably, probably. Should Longstar play for England? Yes. I think he should. No, it's, it's, it, should be, it should be with Michelle. And he just answered your question there, on Scott. He wants to know, who would you choose to be a manager? I mean, it's going to be either Potter or... Pep Guardiola. Cool. <laughs> Can you imagine, Pep? That's, that's it, what, then. Exactly. I wouldn't be surprised if Jorsey got sat. I took over England. Oh my god, <laughs> wouldn't surprise us at all, guys. Wouldn't Can you surprise... imagine that? Exactly. What, what a world that would be if Jason Mourinho was England manager. Well, no, but no, no seriously, I think I think I would, I would always like it to be someone, you know. I don't, I, I'm not, you know, obviously, I don't care who it manages England, but I do like when it's someone from the country. So, I don't well, want well, any well, help. goes back in history, Paul. Look at our most yeah. successful managers. I've been from I've been English, English Sir Ralph Ramsey, Sir Bobby Robson, yeah. Terry Venables, Gareth Southgate. You know annoyingly, I mean? annoyingly, I know who'd be best at the job, but I don't want England to have Eddie Howe. Um, so yeah. they, they can't have him. But the only yeah, the only name I can think of is Graham Potter. And I'm not I'm not saying he's like the answer to everything, but I just don't know who else gets the you know gets the job. I don't know. I don't know. I can't think of any other name that's really out there. That's exciting. Crazy man. Crazy man. There's no one out there at all. I can't figure anyone's going to take over at all whatsoever. But they might do this, they might do the same thing, then promote from within and, and Lee Carsley might get it. Yeah, maybe. He's, he's, yeah. he's down the twenty ones at the moment. Yeah, maybe. He might do the same thing if it comes to it. Yeah. Agree there. Or they get yeah. someone crazy and like because they still think he can do a job, someone like Bloody Lampard. You watch. Oh, blurb it no thanks. Watch I'm no see thanks. You know what the FA are like? They love someone who's like, yes, no problem, you know. They don't want someone like Jorsey then. I doubt it. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> Southgate, Southgate's gone so I to Ben Henson not to type in that sure duty. <sighs> Southgate who looks north for what for gaps of players. He'd rather take an injured Saka than an uninformed Gordon. And um, <laughs> would any of you take a nitty in the summer as that contract at the end of the season, as things stand? We're well stocked in midfield anyway. Well stocked in midfield. He's still a good player. He really is still a good player. But at the end of the day, I think for me, we're well stocked. And I'm sure he's signed a new contract at Leicester. I could be wrong. I could be wrong. But uh, let's have a look at some more as well. Big Frank, <laughs> not for me. Hi guys, I used to love international football, I can't get into it now. What about you guys from me? I'm not bothered about international football at the minute. I mean, if it's tournament football, yes, international footballs, then it's too many breaks, lads. And it's, all too, that. It's, it's the second international break, it's only October. Yeah. It's, ridic it's ridiculous. We've only had like we had well, you know, we had what, what three or four games and we're back in one. It's oh, yeah, it's exactly. Mad. Yeah, it's really maddening and one of them's like a, you know, this is this is where, <clears throat> so I don't blame Premier League managers getting angry. Where one of our games is a friendly, and it's like I don't know why, you know, I, if I was like Klopp or whatever, like I know I know we take the mick out of him, but why would you be like, well, I'll risk my players because we're playing, is it Australia in the friendly? I think so, yeah. Um, do you know what I mean? And if if uh, Trent or someone gets a nasty injury in there, you'd be fuming. Yeah, I would be. Because yeah. I don't know why you'd want to risk anyone like that in a, in a point. In a, no offense to Australia, but it is. It's a pointless friendly. Yeah, no, I agree, mate. You know, we roll them over because they're not a great side. What do we get out of it? Oh, and then man. we play we play Italy in a bit more of a competitive game, but again, like oh, I don't know, it's just it's just so strange, isn't it? Very, it's absolutely ridiculous, man. It really is. I mean, he picks the same players every single oh, time. Geez, you want man. different, no one different, right? I want to see different players play for England, right? Like, give them a chance like Andy Gordon's of this world, the Jar Bourne's of this world, you know. He's in form like he promised. Do you know what I mean? He promised that you pick based off form. Yeah. Then what, and, then, and then pricks Calvin Phillips. 
<laughs> Why is the form, is he? Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, it shows good form on the bench. I'll tell you that, yeah. I'll tell you that much. Yeah. Oh, McGuire's in good form. Okay. And, you know, so, yeah, it's just, yeah. honestly, it begs belief. It really does, you know. Exactly. Exactly. <clears throat> One man draws it for England. Knows how to win cops on a good run recently since Lukaku has played. Yes. It's a really good point. Been. Very good point. They won the other day as well. Um, waste of time. Um, one of the cool players in Australia. Yeah, I hope he does. I hope he does. That'd be and funny. It'd be fun. And um, yes, for Corton. And unfortunately, I've got to go. You take care, Scott. You watch what you're doing. And thank you for coming on, mate. Good and luck to Leicester. Leicester play come the Premier League or we play Leicester, I'll get you on as well. So there you go. Are we going to wrap up there, guys? And I've just done the player written, so you haven't got time for that. But... He's just more manager and everyone is figuring them out. Exactly. Pretty much, pretty much. Pretty yeah. much so, pretty much so. But that's it, guys. Good wrap up. There's been enough just on an hour and it's been a good show to I thought. And um, yeah, I mean, um, Bill, I mean, so I didn't meet you yesterday, but um, always next season for sure. Yeah, we're definitely, playing, mate. We're playing on the stadium. And where can we find you, mate, on your socials, man? Uh, yeah, so um, as I've linked to there, there's my... Twitter or X um, username, and then there's my YouTube channel as well. So, uh, yeah, feel free to follow and sub by asking any questions, I guess. Yeah, I'll go out to put the description, um, the links in the description as well, mate. I will definitely do that as well. And um, no, cheers, when I um, download it as well, and I'll add it on so I could do that on StreamYard. And what you got coming up on your show? Uh, well, I mean, uh, I did a, I uploaded a vlog um, uh, yesterday about for yesterday's game. So, uh, which has got a decent amount of views and comments and that. So, uh, yeah, check that out, yeah. Fantastic stuff, fantastic stuff. And, Paul, um, obviously you find you on a blank, <laughs> blank canvas PC and you're on Twitter, I saw you on, mate. That's it, mate, yeah. yeah. And, like, uh, yeah, like I say, um, if you want to add me on there, you're welcome to. Uh, a lot of the no, for the, no uh, community we have here have already done that, so thank you. And one thing we can promise here, not going to mention any names, but I think people are going to know where we're going. What we can run is here. You won't get any negativity here. If you, if you share opinion, you're allowed your opinion. Other places, it feels like you can't have an opinion. You obviously get shouted at. So strange behaviour from some other people in this community where you should be open. You're all you're all allowed here. If you want to, you know, if you want to share your opinions and thoughts, what the point of this is? Um, you shouldn't feel like you should be bullied into thinking something else. A uh, bit, bit sad. There you go. We are the, we and John and all that. We're the friendly Newcastle fans. Facts, absolute facts. Thank you, my guy. Absolutely facts. Because the end of the day, right? I mean, I seen yesterday on Tenali, Piers Hamilton go on Tenali on social media saying oh. that he ain't good enough. Blah blah blah. Right? I post that <laughs> tweet a day. Right? And guess what? Not one person had a go at us. Not one. Not one. Mate, he had, he had a, you know, he had a poor f- first half. Second half, he was brilliant. Apart from the one lapse of concentration, which can yeah. happen to anybody, um, anyone can have a lapse of concentration. But he was brilliant second half. Thank you. Hundred percent, absolutely, absolutely, no <laughs> doubt about it. Yeah, I and mean, if I did the players, I'll give him a seven based on that as well. But you know, and I'll give him a seven because you know he stepped up. I like me players that steps up, and yeah. now he did exactly that. Apart from he should have got closed and down, but. I'm not going to argue that at all, so at this moment in time. Good show, guys. Good luck to us and for the rest of the season. Thank you, Foxy. Hope you don't win the Europa League, which is a possibility as well. Oh, I'll settle for that. <laughs> <laughs> so you've been Champions in a row. That's, that's the yeah. reunion podcast, John. We win the Champions League, they win the Europa League. And <laughs> yeah, and then we play the Super Cup. We play the Super Cup. I'll tell you, I'll tell you, I'm going to go there, so I'm going to go in the North. Oh, How many crazy. Newcastle fans are going to go abroad if we um, get to Newcastle West Ham in the Super Cup? Can you imagine? Oh, middle. They have to have a bigger stadium. You can't have a stadium just 10,000, 20,000 in with Newcastle West Ham. Yes, it has to be a bigger stadium. It also has to be played at Wembley. I'll tell you stop something. Stop giving, bloody, stop giving all the tickets away to bloody corporate as well. Jesus, man. Mm. No, Honestly. Crazy. Disgusting. Crazy, man. Absolutely crazy. But it is what it is. But in terms of the great show of the day, we an hour and 10 minutes. And if you like the video, like what you watch, make sure you like and subscribe. And please, guys, go to me latest Smash Day vlogs. It's out there. Stick a like on it, please. That'd be fantastic. And also the fan cams as well. 
So you stick a like on both of those contents I've done yesterday. That'd be helpful. Thank you very much indeed. And like, subscribe as always. I'm back 